Making broccoli sprouts is something that I truly enjoy doing, and the best part is that it's really easy for most of you to do at home. Now recently I discussed the nutritional benefits of sprouts in a video, and so I thought I would show you how I'm making broccoli sprouts, and specifically broccoli because of their high nutritional content and their ability to produce a phytonutrient called sulforaphane, which we'll get more into later. And I also wanted to share some of the best practices regarding the safest way to do this because there are some important things that you should know up front before you begin. So let's get right into it. Welcome to True Freedom Permaculture, where we discuss natural living and how to have a green thumb, even if you weren't born with one. The first best practice that I do that I wanted to share with you all is starting with seeds. You want to make sure that you are getting seeds specifically for sprouting. And the main reason why is because these seeds should have then been tested for E. coli and salmonella. And this, when you hear of people getting sick from sprouts, if you have, it is largely due to diseases like this. So just make sure that you're not using or like regular broccoli seeds. Make sure that you're getting seeds specifically for sprouting. These are by Food to Live, which is a brand that I just found online. So I'll link it for you if you want to buy these in particular. But some of the things that I look for that are important to me are that they're organic because I don't want a bunch of like fungicides or pesticides on the seeds and that they're non-GMO. Speaking of my seeds, I am going to start to soak these. So this is the very first step for what you want to do. And I made a mistake when I was first sprouting these. These are really, really tiny. I don't know if you can see that. Yep. And the mistake that I made when I was first doing these is I would put them in like a small bowl and soak them overnight. That is really unnecessary. You guys just go ahead and take your jar. So I'm using a quart size mason jar, which I find is enough room. It's going to look small at first, but you want a lot of air to circulate around these sprouts and they're going to get larger. So you really do need a lot more jar space than you think. So just go ahead and soak them in the jar that you're going to use. Why well, dirty something else, right? So I'm going to take the seeds and I've got here... Basically, for a quart size jar, I feel like the maximum for air circulation that you can get in a jar is going to be a tablespoon. So, a tablespoon is the max, and normally, it also depends, you don't want to make too many, because if you make too much, then they're going to go bad, unless you decide that you want to freeze them, which I will discuss more later. But, if you're keeping them fresh in the fridge, you definitely don't want to make too much. So... Normally, for my family, I would do only a two teaspoons, I feel like is the sweet spot for how much we'll actually use up within the time period that they'll stay fresh in the fridge. But I have some family coming into town this week, and I think we're going to want to try them. So I'm making some extra. So I have done the full tablespoon. And now I'm just going to go ahead and pour water over them. This is filtered water which I will also discuss more later. And I give them a swirl just to make sure that they're good and covered. And then all I do is I'm going to screw on my lid. And that is all there is to it. So now you're going to leave this jar on the counter or your windowsill or wherever, just like this. Don't invert it yet. That'll come later. But leave it here. And, you know, uh, they say also to keep the seeds before they've sprouted in a warm place. I just always keep it wherever or like in the same room as where I'm eventually going to be sprouting them. It has not been an issue for me, but I also don't make these during the cooler months. For me personally, I tend to eat sprouts more during the warmer months. So like I said, it's been a non-issue, but if you plan on eating these during the fall or the winter, then yeah, you might have to store these somewhere a little warmer than normal just to get them started. Let's pretend it is the next day and you're just going to drain out the water from your soaking seeds and this is how you'll start them. Now I set the jar at an angle to drain and I'll show you exactly how I do this after day two. Now I wanted to show you how I rinse my sprouts. So this is something that you want to do two to three times per day and it's important because you want to make sure that you are getting rid of the bacteria, the potentially bad bacteria that's growing on them and it just kind of freshens them up. So this is the second full day of growing the sprouts. You can see they're starting to have tiny little white tails and you can even see some of the yellow cotyledons forming 
and eventually those will turn green and that's what we're waiting for. But in the meantime, this is how I rinse them. And I personally find that twice a day is fine in the morning, in the evening, and they're really forgiving. So, you know, just because like, oh, I didn't do it at 9 a.m. and 9 p.m., it doesn't matter. I've forgotten for a few hours and it's totally fine. So as long as you're doing this twice a day, somewhat spread out. And notice I'm just pouring it straight through the hole. That's a mistake that I made before is I would go to all this trouble of like taking the lid off. I would take this lid and I would just like unscrew it. And then what would happen is these tiny seeds would get caught in the threads of the glass jar. And that is definitely a recipe for uh, breeding some unwanted bacteria. So I realized that I was really making it harder on myself than it had to be. And these lids are very smartly designed. So just pour the water through it. Do not take the lid off. And what I've done here is I've filled it with filtered water. So I am using filtered water. Again, I think that that is really important because filtered water, it just makes sure it doesn't have any like, depending on what filter you have, but my filter makes sure that it doesn't have any heavy metals in it. So as you can see, I just filled it. And with this mason jar, I filled it about halfway, which is fine for now. I might add more water later on when the sprouts get a little bigger, but right now they're still really tiny. So just adding them on, giving it a swish. And then with this lid, you'll see that it has holes in it. So what I can do is make sure that when I drain it, all I have to do is just pour it out just like that and now your sprouts are rinsed. And it really is that simple. So you can see it's really not a big deal. Now, I don't know if this is necessary, but I like to kind of spread my seeds out a little bit instead of just leaving them all clustered together at the bottom of the jar, but it doesn't have to take long. Just shake them out a little bit like that. And then I'll show you what I do next. Okay, this is how I drain my seeds after I have rinsed them. So I showed you the rinsing process and you can just take a paper towel or I'm using just a plain cotton napkin and but I do make sure that it's clean though that's definitely important so I like to put mine by a windowsill so you can't see this but I have the window closed right now for noise but I do crack the window to let some airflow in and before when I would make sprouts I would just kind of leave them like that and you'll notice that the lid it's okay like the lid does have the ability to have some air in and it did kind of work but there were a couple of days where I was like oh you know these are kind of smelling off and so what I have found works better is if you tilt the jar like this. Let me show you a little bit better. If you tilt them like that, I do find that that creates more airflow. So that way what you're doing is all the water is making sure that it drains down, plus you're getting all of this air going in this way, especially when the windows open. And that way I find that the sprouts will stay nice and fresh. Now, if you don't have a setup like this, I have seen people use like, um, racks for drying dishes you could set it on that i have seen people set it in a large bowl just at an angle this is just what works for me and it's right by my sink which i like so trying to keep this as simple as possible if i notice that it is i don't know it doesn't seem like a big deal but when you do this twice a day or three times a day potentially having it as close to your sink or water source as possible is just going to make it that much easier for you the other detail I wanted to show you is this lid. So do you see how there is sort of, oh, it's not octagonal. I'm not gonna cut octagonal, is that how you'd say it? But I don't, I'm not gonna count all the sides, but you will see it has some flat sides on it. And the reason is so that it can sit at an angle on surfaces a lot easier. So if it were completely round, like a typical mason jar lid, it would kind of be like wobbly and such, but it is specifically designed for this, which is another reason that I like these lids. I will link them if you decide you wanna purchase these. Now, as for how long you wanna sprout your broccoli seeds, that really depends on what you're going for. So if you're looking to produce optimal amounts of sulforaphane, which is a phytonutrient I mentioned in the beginning of the video, which has all the anti-cancer properties that people are looking for, then I would harvest them around day two or day three because that is when the cotyledons first appear, which are those things that look like leaves, but they're not actually leaves. Um, they are, they turn, they start yellow and they turn kind of greenish. But anyway, when those first start to appear, that is when the sprouts have the highest amount of the precursor to sulforaphane, which is glucoriphenin. So if you're going for high amounts of sulforaphane, then harvest them then. Personally, I wait until my sprouts are a little larger. So they're about an inch long, 
for longer and that the cotyledons have turned fully green. And I have no scientific evidence to back me up on this. I will just say that I feel intuitively that we should eat things when they look their best, when they're the most vibrant. And for me, this occurs on day five to day seven, depending on the temperature in the room. All right, can you all see these tiny white hairs that are growing? If not, I'm gonna zoom in so you can get a better shot. But I wanted to show you during the process that these tiny little hairs, some people confuse them as mold. And that's initially what I thought. I was like, oh no, I have to throw my batch of sprouts away when I first saw these. But I did some research and it's actually not mold. It, they are roots. So especially if your sprouts aren't smelling off, then it is most likely just these roots that are growing and they're just basically trying to reach out saying like, hey, I need some water. So you'll notice that after you know you swirl them around in water, they will go away. So I just wanted to point that out. When you've decided your broccoli sprouts are finished growing, what you wanna do is empty the jar onto a clean paper towel, and I spread them out as much as possible like this, so then that way they have as much surface area exposed so that they can air dry more effectively. You do not wanna store these wet because again, the moisture will encourage the growth of some bad bacteria potentially to form. So make sure they air dry. For me, again, it's gonna depend on the temperature or the humidity, I should say, in the room. But for me, this usually takes a few hours. And if I'm feeling especially ambitious, I will take clean hands and just sort of give them a toss so that they, every so often, just to make sure that they get really dry. So I might do that one or two times throughout the drying process. Once they're done, you can store them in the fridge in a plastic container or a glass jar, preferably actually a glass jar uh, with the microplastics and all that. But they will last in your fridge for a few days. And sometimes I even just kind of loosen the lid. I don't put it on fully tight so they have like a little bit of air going in. So that's up to you whether or not you want to do it. But they do not last that long. However, you can freeze them. The thing about freezing them though is that if you do so, once you thaw them, they're going to be soggy. So they're not going to be as great for garnishing things or in a salad anymore. But they will still be very good in smoothies, for example or any other way that you want to use. If you decide you want to steam them lightly, then they're still good for that. But they're not going to have that like crisp, crunchy texture that they will when they are eaten fresh. I hope this video has shown you how making broccoli sprouts is really a simple process, and maybe it's encouraged you to try making some on your own. That's all I have for today, and I will see you all again soon.